Am I too low? I don't know. I've got a new tripod, so I'm not quite sure about the height, but this should be good. And today I'm going to talk about something that gets a lot of people bogged down when they're first starting out. It's the cause of a lot of frustration. You know, you try, you mess up, you get frustrated, you try again, you might whip yourself, it hurts, ouch, that's no good. This sucks, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> Another jump rope beginners fundamental tutorial and today I'm going to talk about something that gets a lot of people bogged down when they're first starting out um, it's the cause of a lot of frustration and this this type of training is it really takes a lot of patience because you know you try you mess up you get frustrated you try again you might whip yourself it hurts ouch that's no good this sucks I don't want to do it anymore but with a bit of persistence and with a bit of patience and with what I'm going to talk to you about in this video it will be a much smoother ride for you in this video we're going to talk about coordination this isn't so much um, a technical aspect I'm not going to show you how to position your hands for a double under um, but the whole rope rage idea is to be a much more well-rounded athlete we're taking into consideration the mental aspect as well as the physical aspect of our training. So we're gonna look at some things we can do to help coordination. Now, first off, I wanna say this. With your skipping rope training, you need your hands and your feet to be on the same wavelength. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you need um, your hands and your feet to move at the same beat because if you're doing certain techniques like a double under you only jump once but your hands rotate twice so it wouldn't count in that case but you need as weird as this sounds you need your hands to know what your feet are doing and your feet to understand what your hands are doing also and when they're both locked in and doing what they have to do everything's gonna be all gravy <laughs> Probably the number one most frustrating issue is that when you're first starting out you're thinking of two things you're trying to focus on what your hands are doing and what your feet are doing and it's a lot of brain work and doing that doesn't really allow you to explore um, the vast range of techniques that you can do with a rope so my recommendation and this is what I say to anyone who trains with me is to make your footwork automatic okay if you need to write that down and pin it to your bedside table and read that every morning do so because it's key you need to get to a point where you're not thinking about your footwork okay the rhythm is there the rhythm is automatic all you have to focus on is the various things you're going to do with your hands I've done this in the past in training sessions in the past i'll tell people to put the rope aside and just focus on your rhythm okay even if it takes just jumping 50 times just to get used to that rhythm and then we'll introduce the rope in one hand and we'll swing that rope to get used to the feel of a rope in our hands um, but not having to trip over the rope over all the time when your rope is open and in two hands and then we introduce the rope you really want to get your footwork automatic So a drill you can do is before your training, before you even pick up the rope, just stand up and just focus on your jump. I'll demonstrate. Focusing on this rhythm, really ingraining it. Repeat, 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 repeat. Just focus on that jump. You want that, you want that rhythm to be automatic. We don't want to be thinking about, I need to jump now. I need to jump now, I need to jump now. Oh, I need to turn my rope now, I need to turn my rope now. It's too much and it's not, it's not elegant, it's not fluid. So 
that's something I want to leave you with today. A good, very good analogy actually is um, for anyone who drives, uh, you will know that, <laughs> I'm going to share a funny story as well, but for anyone who drives, you will know that as you're driving, your pedals are doing, or sorry, your feet are doing their thing on the pedals and you're just focusing on steering with your hands, right? And just assessing situations. That's how it should really be with a rope. You want your footwork to be on auto. The rhythm just needs to be there. You're not thinking about it and you're just focusing on what your hands do. Now, here's the story. My very first um, driving lesson when I was a bit younger than I am now. This is not a joke. I was driving and like my head was down. I had no regard for what was going on on the road ahead of me. My head was down and I was just making sure my feet were on the right pedals and that foot's on the clutch and that foot's on the accelerator and I'm expecting by some kind of magic for the car to navigate itself. And my instructor is looking at me and he's like, he's speechless. Um, <laughs> Because I was so bogged down on what my feet were doing, I completely forgot to um, drive the car and um, make sure I didn't run into anything. So, yeah, that's, that's a perfect analogy. You don't want to be me on my first driver's lesson. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Work on that coordination. Get your footwork automatic. Get that rhythm just get that rhythm ingrained in the mind. It's all it's all brain training. You need to you need to form new neural pathways in your brain, and you do this by repetition. So just work on those reps. Um, and yeah, that's it. Let me know how you get on. All the best with your training and stay raging.